is all you can eat and drink. See beyond. According to Oppo, its new Reno series is all about being able to further your vision. And as a result, we have one of the most versatile camera combos in the industry with some very interesting tricks that are rather unique. The question is, does it really deliver on that promise? And there's really only one way to find out. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now. This is the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom, and we're about to test it in one of the most beautiful cities, Tokyo, Japan. So our tour guide has a little birdie. What is it about? <laughs> Animals and tour guides and I don't know. So we are currently in the Sensoji Temple, probably the oldest temple in Tokyo, founded in 645 AD. It is gorgeous, a lot of color, a lot of saturation, perfect for testing the Oppo Reno 10X. And I'll tell you this much, this camera is really impressing me and also the display, I mean, colors and saturation really pop here. And it doesn't really matter if I'm using the 10X uh, hybrid or if I'm using the 6X zoom or the standard or the wide angle, colors are beautiful. Obviously, we're just getting started with our testing. Here are some samples of the experience and we've got a lot more to go. Talk about crazy restaurant names. We're currently at Waga Mama Shabu Shabu. I hope I got it right. Japanese food is uh, definitely my favorite, and uh, testing the AI capabilities for food photography have proven to be really good. Here are a couple of samples. Really impressed with the Oko Reno. I'll let the samples do the talk. Currently in the Yanaka sector, which is a very old area in Tokyo. What's most important, we were able to test video capabilities of the Oppo Reno 10X. And uh, we've got 4K at 60. Uh, stabilization was good, 4K at 30 as well. Uh, sadly, in the selfie camera, you're capped at 1080p at 30. Dynamic range was a little overexposed for my taste. Now you probably noticed that audio is quite epic from this phone. There are a couple of modes standard and then there's a directional audio option that will prioritize depending on where it senses audio it's, that's coming from and then there's the 3d audio option which is the one that i'm currently using uh, the speakers on this phone are very loud significantly loud and uh obviously i'm hoping that this is what the resulting footage is going to sound like in the computer stabilization on the selfie camera is not necessarily the best but uh other than that I like the performance. Wish it were 4K. I mean, you've got the megapixels to be able to achieve that, so hopefully for a future version. Probably one of the most interesting parts is that even if you have all the versatility of, uh, you know, optical limit stabilization and the main sensor and everything, you can't use the 10x zoom for video, nor can you use the wide angle. You are stuck with the primary camera, 
and the 2x crop that it creates is literally just the crop within the same sensor, though you've got enough megapixels to achieve that and have it look lossless. Currently in the beautiful Nezu Shrine. There are actually a couple of shrines in this area. This is the most beautiful one. Let's talk portrait photography. I find it rather interesting that uh, you've got a lot of versatility. You don't need to step back from your subject to be able to take your shot. It's using the wide angle as the assistant for the depth sensor, which is fabulous. Uh, you cannot edit the photos after the fact, though. There are a couple of effects, but you have to select these before you take the shot. Now, the results are rather natural. If you stick to the main camera, the results are really, really good, and I love the color science that OPPO is using for these. In the case of selfie portraits, they're good. I like the fact that uh, the crop is actually not bad. It's not too close to you, so that's great. But then the results are obviously hit or miss, depending on the amount of lighting you have. Your hair is going to either show up or look jaggy. It all depends. But uh, so far, that's par for the course. It's usually the way most phones behave. I actually like the results. Let me know what you think in the comments. We are currently in a lake called Montsuku, which if you grab any 1,000 yen bill, you'll see that lake in the background, and yes, Behind me is Mount Fuji. This is a beautiful, beautiful place. This is day two of the tour. We're having a great time here. Uh, had an opportunity to test out the camera, and this is one of those places where the versatility is extremely evident. The fact that uh, if you want to capture the lake, you need the wide angle. If you want to capture Mount Fuji in its full splendor, you go for the standard. But then if you want to get closer to Mount Fuji, my God, I got some clips of 2X optical, 6x optical and even 60x digital and obviously once you zoom in fully being able to stabilize the shot is really difficult uh, but you will notice some really good detail regardless of all the light that we currently have there's more to go as mount fuji is next and we're hoping to be able to get there we're still an hour away and find mount fuji visible it wasn't a couple of hours ago so we're getting lucky here Currently in the climb to Mount Fuji, we're actually 2,300 meters above sea level. This is the fifth out of nine stops to get to the top. By the time you get to the sixth stop, you have to hike. There's no way to get there by road. I'm really impressed by the fact that you can actually get this far by road. It's a very beautiful area. Sadly, we came here with the whole idea of taking photos and, uh, well, you can't see anything. Everything that you see here, this is not fog. These are clouds. It is fascinating to be all the way up here, and obviously there is a hit when it comes to breathing and oxygen. So we spent some time having lunch, and I was able to experiment the capabilities of this camera in 4K video at 60 frames per second, and then slowing it down for you to create that awesome sort of slow-mo footage that makes it look very cinematic. I'm very impressed by the capabilities of this one when it comes to video. Obviously we've got more to go, so let's continue. Out of everything I've seen, this is the most beautiful shrine of all. This is Fuji Yoshida. We're currently at the bottom of Mount Fuji. Gorgeous views, gorgeous trees, a lot of green, a lot of saturation. Wow, this is, you have to come and see this. This is fabulous. Definitely a lot of samples from here. Uh, I took a lot of advantage of the wide angle in certain spots took some advantage of a lot of telephoto as well. It's amazing how far you can get with that 10X hybrid. Put this place in your bucket list. This is a very beautiful shrine, my God.
Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there are certain cases where in the samples, it's hard to tell the difference between ultra wide shots and using the standard lens. And that's mainly because there is zero barrel distortion. This is something that many companies struggle with, where you get that fisheye effect around photos. Not a problem here. Obviously, it's not the best sensor for low light. It's a 16 millimeter equivalent f2.2 aperture, eight megapixels, but still, if you're in daylight, this allows you to compose your shots without having to worry about all those borders and everything. A really, really good versatile lens. So you have most likely seen this place in a couple of postcards. That epic shrine with Mount Fuji in the back. This is the Arakurayama Schengen Park. Let's talk about that uh, particular telephoto lens. We've got a periscopic lens of 13 megapixels on the sensor, f3 aperture, 130 millimeters. We've got 5x optical zoom and optical image stabilization. Now, an interesting fact about this phone is that one of the things that I did not like about the Huawei P30 Pro is that there was no stop at 2x, which is my favorite for street photography. It would immediately jump into 5x. Here, no, it jumps to 2x, so you get that option. Then it jumps to 6x, and you're wondering why 6x if uh, it should be 5x optical, but no, it jumps to 6x because according to the engineers, that's like the best blend between sharpness and detail. And uh, then it also jumps into 10x hybrid, unless you wanna go all the way to 60x, which is another option. Uh, the resulting photos from this area are fantastic. I am shocked at the amount of detail you get. Obviously, you've been seeing samples all throughout this video over what this zoom lens can do. Definitely, that's the biggest story in this phone, the fact that we've got that 10x zoom. Even if hybrid, it provides some amazing detail. And yes, this is day three from Tokyo, and there's a main reason why I left this segment until now. It's because we were waiting on a software update that just arrived that brought some tweaks and enhancements to the software and also some major improvements in photography. And we are totally seeing it primarily on the main sensor, which is another great part of the story. The fact that we've got that 48 megapixel camera at f1.7 aperture, a 26 millimeter equivalent that really has 0.8 microns, but becomes 1.6 once you apply pixel binning. There's phase detection, autofocus, and optical image stabilization. And the reason why it's a major deal is because pixel binning plus a dedicated night mode in the software make for some really amazing low light photography. Obviously the primary sensor does really good during the day, great color and everything, but it's in low light where it shines the most because wow, we see a ton of detail. And one of the things that I like about this night mode is that you don't really have to wait long to get your shot. That for me is a big plus, but even more important, which is one of the biggest disappointment with other phones is the fact that night mode doesn't work with the wide angle or the telephoto. Not the case with the Oppo Reno, just like in the case of the Huawei P30 Pro, night mode does work with the ultra wide angle. It does work when you zoom into subjects. Obviously, I still don't know exactly what lens is being used here, but we do have the advantage that we do get a lot of highlights and detail from either zooming into subjects or again in wide. I really like the performance of this camera in low light, and obviously in the day, it's even better. The experience has been fantastic. To conclude, I have to say that my experience with the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom has been far better than I expected. I had seen Oppo working a lot on their photography over the last couple of years, but this is proof that they've come very far and that they've harnessed all the technology that we've got here and that they've innovated with the sensor. In addition to the fact that we've got this periscopic zoom lens, and we've got the versatility of a wide angle that doesn't have barrel distortion. Let us know what you think about all the samples and the experience that we had here in Tokyo with this phone. And while you're at it, make sure you follow Follow us on social media, subscribe to both our channels, English and Spanish, for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on Instagram and social media. Our extended coverage happens there, and you can also follow me for samples of what I do with these phones. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.